Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very empowering show coming right up with special guest Bob Berg, and he's here today to share with us his new book, The Go-Giver Influencer, a little story about a most persuasive idea. Now, Bob is a sought-after speaker at company leadership and sales conferences on the topics at the core of the Go-Giver books. A former television personality and top producing salesperson, Bob has shared the platform with some of today's top business leaders, broadcast personalities, coaches, athletes, and political leaders, including a former U.S. president. So let's welcome to the show, Bob Berg. It is always such a delight to speak with you, Marianne. Oh, you're one of my personal heroes, Bob. I'm so glad that we're spending this time together. And of course, oh my goodness, to talk about this book. How exciting. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, gosh, and so I've got to ask, you know, when you and, you know, John David Mann got together and you were, you know, kind of coming together for the Go-Giver Influencer, what was, like, what was the driving force behind that? Well, you know, it's an interesting question because while influence has always played a part in in the other stories uh, that we did, we really kind of wanted to take it deeper this time. And I think part of that was because we see our current – the current environment of discussion has sort of broken down, <laughs> right? People are are now. You know, it used to be almost whether whether politically or or in other ways, it used to be I'm right, you're wrong, which you know it isn't ideal anyway. But now it's it's moved from I'm right, you're wrong to I'm right, you're evil, and now it's you know rather than discussion, it's now vitriolic uh, insults and. It, it just seemed time to kind of say, okay, let's let's look at how we – because, you know, remember, with all these insults and all these, these horrible personal attacks, no one's minds are being changed. Uh, it's just making – it's just setting people further and further apart. So we really wanted to kind of show that you can get the results you want when dealing with others, but you can also do it in a way that, 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 that makes people genuinely feel good about themselves – uh, about you and about the situation. Oh my goodness, wouldn't that be amazing? Because it's you're so right. It's so polarized. Oh, well, yeah. You know, a lot of people right now they're like, "Well, I survived Thanksgiving with the family. I right. don't know if I can do another holiday." You know, we're kind of in between holidays right now. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, can, can kind of break it down for our listeners when we talk about influence. What are what what is, what does that even mean? Sure. Uh, and, and I think there's a couple different levels of this, Marianne. On a, a very, very basic level, we can define influence as simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. That's, you know, by definition, that's what influence is. But I don't believe that that's the, the substance or the essence of influence. Uh, I believe the essence of influence is pull, uh, pull as opposed to push, uh, as in the age-old question, how far can you push a rope? And the answer is not very, at least not very fast or very effectively, which is why great influencers don't push. You never hear people say things like, wow, that Dave or that Susan, she is so influential, she has a lot of push with people. No, she's influential, she has a lot of pull with people. Right, so influence is not about pushing your will on others or pushing your ideas on others or being pushy. It's it's about pull. It's an attraction. Great influencers, what we call genuine influencers, attract people first to themselves and only then to their ideas. And they do this through understanding what motivates others. And and it's you know it's. Um, I guess it's understanding, in a sense, what Dale Carnegie, uh, what I believe his underlying premise was in his classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's where he wrote that ultimately people do things for their reasons, not our reasons. And if we were to take this from an entrepreneurial or sales point of view, uh, you know, we'd say, well, you know, people don't buy from you because you have a quota to meet. 
right? They don't buy from you because you need the money, or and they don't even buy from you because you're a nice person. They buy from you or do business with you because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And that's fine. That's It's understanding that. So as an influencer, what we need to do is move from an I or me focus to an other focus. Uh, it's asking ourselves questions such as, how does what I want this person to do, how does it align with their goals, with their needs, their wants, their desires? How does what I'm asking this other person to do, how does it align with their values? And when we ask ourselves these questions thoughtfully, intelligently, uh, genuinely, authentically, not as a way to manipulate another person into doing our will, but as a way of building everyone in the process, now we've come a lot closer to earning that person's commitment rather than trying to depend on some type of uh, compliance. That's the difference between pull and push. I love that. And what's fabulous is that that can be used not just, you know, in a business sense, but personally. Sure. You know, how we're relating with other people, it's kind of like the cornerstone of, you know, how society, you know, should be run in many ways. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Especially now. <laughs> so, well, and so in your book, I know you talk about a lot of things. And, you know, when we're an influencer, how is it possible for us then to bring value into other people's lives? So we're, we're paying attention to what it is that's important to them. How do we add that value to not, you know, not just the discussion, but, you know, if we're in a sales aspect, being able to make sure that we fulfill what it is that they need? Sure. Well, you think about, you know, what is sales, right? And by definition, sales is simply discovering what the other person needs, wants, or desires and helping them to get it. So how do you do that? Well, you ask questions. And then, and this is as as important as asking questions is you listen. And and, and that can be difficult sometimes because we kind of know what we want to say, right? Yeah. But, you know, we say for, for principle number two with the, you know, in, in the, um, with the five, uh, you know, the, the principles of, of influence that we talk about, we say step into the other person's shoes. Now, that's, you know, that sounds easy. It sounds kind of trite because it's an old saying, step into the other person's shoes. Sounds easy, but is it really? Because when you think about it, most people have different size feet. So uh, literally, we can't step into their shoes. Figuratively, we can't step into their minds or know what they're thinking. Why? Because as human beings, we tend to come at things from different points of view, you know, different belief systems. We have our own subjective truths from which we work. And most of those, which I call your belief system, is a combination of upbringing, environment, schooling, right, news media, television, what have you, uh, typically given to you before you were – old enough to even consciously accept them, right? So most people, they live their lives subject to what I call an unconscious operating system, making most of their choices and their their decisions from that basic premise. Well, so what happens is, you know, you see the world a certain way, and as, and again, going back to just being human beings, we tend to think that the way we see the world is basically the same way everyone else does. How could it be any different? It's all we know, but it's not true. Other people see the world differently from from the way we see it. And that's why it's so important in order to add value to another person's life to first understand what it is they value. Because value, which I define as the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder, uh, it's totally in the eyes of the beholder. And that's why it's so important to listen to what they say so that we know what they find of value, and then we can bring it to them. I love that. I mean, I'm telling you, Bob, you always come up with the most amazing things, Uh, and yet they're so simple. Everyone can use this in their own lives in many different capacities. You look at this and it's like, you know, why haven't I been using this all my life? (laughs) Well, 
you, you know, and, and what we really try to do is, is make it very simple because it, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. You know, one of my uh, old mentors, Harry Brown, uh, used to say the secret of selling is to find out what people want and help them get it, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's about as simple as it can be. Everything else is just sort of, uh, you know, window dressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's just kind of icing on the cake, which, you know, for me, I mean, I've been a longtime fan of your books, started with The Go-Giver, <clears throat> excuse me, back in the day, and when I first got into business, and it helped me tremendously, and so it's it, it's uh. just such a beautiful thing to continue to see The Go-Giver series continue and offer so much, and uh, thank you. the word value, because it offers tremendous value, mm. so... It just, it's helped me um, tremendously in my life. Well, and so when we look at all of this, you know, and we talk about like looking at what the other people want, being in their shoes. I know in your book, you, you also kind of talk about thought mastery. And it's interesting, you know, in regards to, you know, what that is. And I'd love for you to share with our listeners why thought mastery is important. Well, I mean, I think it's to the degree that we, you know, that we choose uh, where our focus is going to be. I mean, it really comes comes down to that. So, you know, how do we look at a certain, uh, how do we frame a certain situation? And, you know, one of the things we talk about is to, uh, and this was principle number three, is set the proper frame. And so we ask the question, well, what is a frame? And a frame is the foundation from which everything else evolves. And when we understand this, we also understand how important it is to master the frame, whether it's a frame we're setting for someone else or whether we're seeing something uh, uh, through a frame we choose to, to see it through. You know, we can take any situation and we can see it as a positive, we can see it as a negative. Um, well, let me, if, may I share a, a quick frame story with you? Oh, please, yes. And and this is probably one of my favorites, and it has nothing to do with with business, but it has everything to do with with how to really position a situation for something positive as opposed to something negative. And it was several years ago. I was in a uh, Dunkin' Donuts restaurant, and there was a little boy, a toddler, probably two, two and a half years old. He was running around the restaurant, and his parents called him back over to the table. And as he was walking toward them, he slipped, he fell, and he didn't hurt himself, but you could tell he was he was shocked, he was surprised. That was not something in his experience that he recognized. And um, immediately, he looked at his parents, the two people he, he trusted most in the world, to get their interpretation of the event. In other words, what happens next, right? And I truly, truly believe, Marianne, that that had the uh, parents gotten upset or panicky or, you know, run over, oh, no, are you okay? You know, uh, he would have started to cry. But what they did is they handled it so beautifully. They walked over quickly, of course, but, but very, uh, uh, you know, but, but, but quickly but without panic. It was a very serene way they, they did it. Uh, they smiled and they... They applauded and they laughed and they said, oh, what a good trick. That looks like so much fun. And as you can imagine, immediately the little boy began to laugh. Now, what the parents did, and this is so important, is they set a productive frame from which he could operate. And we can do the same thing. Uh, so when we have it, when we first meet someone, it might be in the way we greet them, the way we make them feel welcome, the way we, right? Or it could also be, now this is just as important, is to reset another person's negative frame. Uh, for example, let's say you're about to do a, a presentation, for sales presentation, and this prospective customer or client, uh, they seem to be kind of defensive, they they are edgy. They let you know, oh, I'm just looking right now and I'm not ready to, you know, or whatever. And who knows what the, you know, they may have had a bad experience before, so their frame is one of, you know, salesperson against the customer. Or maybe they they kind of believe they're too quick to buy when they want something, so it's more of a defensiveness, a defense mechanism for themselves, what have you. So what we do is is rather than buy into that frame where it's now us against them, 
and we know that's never going to work out <laughs> well for either of us. Uh, instead, let's reset the frame. So you might say something like, um, you know, Mary, while we've been able to help a lot of people with this product, uh, whether or not it's the right answer for you, the right solution for you, we simply can't know without exploring deeper and discovering whether it meets your personal needs. So please know our conversation is for both of us to to uh, determine this. And if it does, great. If not, that's okay too. Oh. So now you've reframed this from one of from uh, from one of the adversaries to one of two allies, both approaching this from the frame of, hey, let's just let's just find out what's best for you. Well, and and what a perfect and soft place that is because really we're there just to give them information and to help them with the decision, but -hmm. they're ultimately the ones who are making the decision if it's right for them. Sure, sure. So especially in in a business thing, but I love the story about the kid in the donut place because it's so true. A lot of times if we reframe how situations come together, it's like, you know, most of the time me personally some of my greatest experience has come from those falling down failures. You know, so I look back and it and I, I don't really look at them as like, gosh, those were bad experiences. I would always go back and, and do an analysis on them to say, okay, where can I have done better? You know, well, that's a great personal reframe because, you know, yucky things do happen. And when they do, it doesn't mean that we enjoy them at the moment. You know, I mean, <laughs> failure is never fun and, you know, things like that. But we can get the lesson from it. We can, you know, once we get over the emotional aspect of it, we can then say, okay, what did I learn from this? What could I do next time? Uh, how could I create the environment where that's not likely to happen? So there's all sorts of lessons. So so I, I totally agree with you that that we can reframe we can reframe for ourselves and and have that help us advance to the next level. Well, and so um, what if we're dealing with somebody that's highly emotional? How how can we be an influencer in that moment? Well, the first. Uh, step is to not be emotional ourselves, and you know, the, and actually the um, the first principle that we talk about is to master your emotions, control your emotions, and it can be difficult because we're we're human beings, we're emotional creatures. We you know we'd like to think we're logical, and to a certain extent, of course, we are, but we're we're pretty emotion driven as human beings, right? I mean, we make major decisions based on emotion. Uh, we back up those emotion-based decisions with with logic. So we, you could say that we rationalize. Um, and if you if you take the word rationalize and break it down, it simply means we tell ourselves rational lies, and we we do this to justify those emotional decisions we make. And that might be uh, that uh, something that someone says or does. Uh, Pushes our emotional hot buttons, and 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 rather than than handle it coolly, and whether than you know we we say or we do something that we know is totally counterproductive to what we want to have you know happen, but we do it anyway. And so so now one thing we're not saying and not suggesting is that you deny your emotions or you forego your emotions. Uh, not necessary. Emotions are a wonderful part of life. They, they bring us joy. They make life worthwhile. What we're saying is make sure that you are in control of your emotions rather than your emotions being in control of you. Or as my great friend Dondi Scumachi puts it, uh, take your emotions along for the ride, but make sure you are driving the car. Uh, in other words, you're at the wheel. The logical part of you making the decisions is at the wheel. Your emotions are, you know, seatbelt fastened in the passenger seat. And again, that doesn't mean that we don't utilize our emotions when making decisions, right? Our emotions have a lot of wisdom to share, but they can't be the decision maker if we want to create the environment where we're making the right decisions. Okay, that's got to come from the logical aspect. So when we're dealing with others, well, first, if, if these are people who are on our teams or people who we're working with, we need to kind of teach them to to master their emotions. And we do that, of course, by setting the example, by being the person whose, whose fallback position is into uh, what I call the default setting, is is in calm, is in control. 
and people can learn from that. But if it's someone who, let's say, you're working with who has an issue with emotions and losing their emotions and so forth, not controlling them, then it's a matter of being able to constructively work with them. Can I can I provide you with, if I may, with just a, a suggestion on how to how to do that? Oh, I would love that. So let's say you're, uh, and you can teach anyone how to do this. Let's say there's either a certain person or a certain situation that just pushes your emotional hot buttons every time. And we all have those. Um, it, it's a, a, a certain person at work or a customer who, who a- asks the same you know, question every time or gives the same agenda, or it's somebody who, what have you. So, and you know it's going to happen. The good news is you know it's going to happen, <laughs> so you can prepare for it. So, so here's what you want to do. Picture how it usually is when this person or this situation comes up and how you kind of lose your cool a little bit or get aggravated or frustrated or angry, whatever, and, and just allow yourself to have that feeling. And it, you know how it feels kind of, you know, not, not really good or not productive. Now what I want you to do is picture that happening again. But now I want you to picture yourself and imagine yourself just responding beautifully. Uh, it doesn't upset you in any way. You just kind of let it go through you. You feel great about it. You take a moment. You don't interrupt the person. You just kind of let it happen. And then you frame the perfect response to the person that builds everyone and, and is just a, it just is a beautiful, uh, now, uh, don't worry about the exact words. Those, those come. That, that's not the issue. It's more your own, uh, feeling. Now, when that happens, and I, and I want you to just kind of play through that in your own mind, and then see how great you feel about it. Then what I want you to do is practice that. Practice that scenario. Practice it again and again and again. This is very similar to an astronaut who, before going into space on a mission, he or she will do hundreds of simulations first. Why? Because when they're up in space, when, heaven forbid, something happens, there's a breakthrough, you know, break in the machinery or there's something. that Well, they know because they've rehearsed it. They've gone through it. They've done hundreds of simulations. So there's nothing surprising about it, okay? And they're able to handle it. Now, I'd say, well, that's not the exact same being up in space and, and doing the simulations. No, but it's close enough, actually, because, as you know, the human, the subconscious can't distinguish between what has actually happened and what has been suggested to it over and over and over again. So when you go through these situations that you know are going to happen or something very similar to it, and you rehearse how you – then what happens is when it happens next time, there's no surprise. You just kind of in that nanosecond in your mind, you just kind of say to yourself, oh, yeah, I know this. Yeah, I've been through this a whole bunch of times. And now you handle it beautifully. And when you do afterwards, I want you to just feel great about it. And when you do this, what happens is two things. That first, you know that if you can do it that way, if you can, if you can do it correctly one time, you could theoretically do it that way every time. The second thing is, you won't do it correctly every time because you're human and I'm human and we're going to still mess up from time to time. But the level of improvement is going to be so significant that it's going to be just life-changing. And I'm telling you, within two or three weeks of doing this, you'll be absolutely amazed. And so will others who are seeing you, who are around you and seeing this. See, when you can control your own emotions and help others to work effectively within theirs – now your level of influence is ready to go sky high. Mm. Well, and it's so encouraging to hear that this doesn't take months or years to develop. It's something that can happen in a pretty short time. Right, and not a lot of stuff you've got to remember. You don't have to remember five ways to do this or two ways to do this or that. We wanted to make it very, very simple because really that's how it works best. Yeah. Yeah, and that way it's an easy thing. But I love that because you know we all have somebody that's really good at pushing a button or two. Sure, and being able to prepare ahead of time. Yep. You know, especially because you know we've holidays right around the corner, and to be able to prepare ahead of time. You know, when you're at that family gathering, not to have that family member you know kind of weigh in on you, or maybe it's a customer or a boss or what have you. Mm-hmm. It's easy then to make those changes and move into a place of control. I'm really interested. I bet it really affects everyone around you as well. 
Well, it, it, it does. You know, it, it begins with you, but it, it does affect everyone around you. And so you're really teaching by doing. And, you know, that's always the that, that's always the, the best way to do it. And, you know, for those family get-togethers, and the same thing online, when someone, you know, you know, people make a statement or a political statement or some statement and, and people start to argue and so forth. And really, you know, what you want to do is, you know, if you choose to do this is, is even if this person says something that you totally disagree with, you can, you know, and you can say, you know, Dave or, or Mary, I, I, so appreciate the passion you have for this topic. Uh, obviously you and then whatever it might be, you really care about the whatever or care about people or want to see the, you know, and say, and then what you say is, is like you, you know, I want to live in a country where people are able to, and then basically you say whatever it is, the same outcome. Okay. And then you add, I think probably our only difference is the way we feel is the, the best way, the most effective way to get there. And a couple things happen here because one, Remember, most people, and I'm talking about both sides of the political aisle, most other than the total outliers on on each on you know each, but most people, 99.9% of the people, I don't care how far left, how far right, they're at center or middle, whatever. Most people just they want this country or wherever they live to be a good country where people are able to live lives of happiness and uh, prosperity and, and so forth. And so what we need to, to understand is this person who disagrees with us still has good intent. And that's what we've got to understand. And that's what I think we've, we've lost, you know, to think that because someone disagrees with us on the way to get there, that they must have bad intent or evil intent. They probably don't. And so when we can look at them as a human being with good intent and we can recognize their humanity and we can acknowledge that humanity uh, and then say, uh, you know, and then, you know, again, like you, I want to live in a country where I think our biggest difference is what the best way is to be able to get there. This does a couple things. One, it reframes this from, a, you know, a horrible argument to enemies, blah, 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 to to both having the same goal. But even if that person just can't get past their own emotion, remember there's other people watching the discussion, whether it's online or in person, and they're kind of, you know, they, their minds may not be totally made up, and they may be able to be influenced to your way of thinking. And what they're doing is they're watching this conversation between the two of you, and if this other person is coming across as angry and insulting and so forth, they have much less credibility than you who's coming across very you know, loving and kind and inclusive. And so you know, that, that actually allows you to be more influential to those people. Well, and, and there's something beautiful that comes from varied points of view, you know, and, and I agree with you. I, it's it's important that, you know, someone who has a different point of view isn't really deemed as evil. It, it's more of this is a different way of looking at things. Let's see if we can bring our thought processes together and make something better. Exactly. That is... I think the end goal for everybody. So no, no fighting at the holiday table here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and, and that's one of those things, again, where you can rehearse that. Because if it's likely to happen at your table, no, go in beforehand with a game plan. And if that's not something you want to get sucked into, then just realize it's going to happen. And when it does, you say to yourself in that little, what I call that nanosecond, <laughs> right? It's, it's, oh yeah, I remember this. I rehearsed this already. <laughs> I'm just not going to, I'm just going to, you know, smile pleasantly or, you know, what have you, and, and just don't get sucked into it if that's what you choose. But if you do choose to, if you want to be involved in a discussion, you also know you have the power to be in a discussion and not let yourself get sucked into a vitriolic uh, argument. Yes, without a doubt. Oh, my goodness. I mean, your book, The Go-Giver Influencer, it's so easy to see, Bob, why you're such a big influencer yourself. I mean, oh, the book, you. we, we haven't even touched, like, even a portion of it <laughs> in this discussion. But thank that's you. okay, you know, because I think people want to go and get their own copies, you know? Well, I, I appreciate that. You always have such kind uh kind and considerate words here. You know, you're one of my favorite people. I hope you know that. I always uh, oh, always love you. speaking with you. Yeah, 
Kelly, you you always make my day because I you know I listen to your podcast and you know I highly suggest that our listeners do as well. It's very interesting and it's also on Facebook Live, which I love. Uh, and so a lot of times when I'm walking, I listen to it and and really just gain some great information. You know, and so Bob, for our listeners that are new to you, um, where can they connect with you and be part of your community? Um, probably the easiest thing to do is to go to the go giver without the hyphen the go giver dot com and they can scroll down that page and when they're there they 'll see the uh, you know the podcast the Facebook live they can join the go giver movement and we have a facebook uh, go giver influencers Facebook group uh, which we have a lot of really cool people uh, with us there and it's just it 's a really fun fun community and if they want to um, uh, read a couple of chapters of any of the books in the series. They can they can do that and read the first couple chapters and see if they like it first. Wow, well, I can't see why anyone wouldn't. I mean, it made <laughs> such a huge impact in my life. I highly suggest every book you've written and the entire series. So, well, Bob, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. My absolute absolute pleasure. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you, Bob, and of course, to talk about your new book, The Go-Giver Influencer. You can pick up Bob's book at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and of course, all indie bookstores. If you want to learn more about Bob, please visit his website at Berg, that's B-U-R-G dot com. Make sure to sign up for his newsletter and check out his Facebook Lives. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.